Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another excellent draft here on Big Derf Gaming. And yeah, uh, today we asked the question, and it's it's a pretty good one. Are we good? Because we still have two freaking trophies, and that's it. And that is it is very disappointing. And admittedly, if I wasn't recording most of, like all these drafts, I would probably have done more drafts by now. But only two trophies through what? This is number twelve, I think. It's not an amount I'm happy with. Uh, let's look, take a look at this pack. Lannery was strong in my last deck, but I think she's just worse than Monstrosaur. So we've got Monstrosaur, who is a monster. Uh, and I think it's just better than Bishop because Bishop is a 5-drop five, five that's a 3-3. Three, three, and that, yeah, it's got that upside of losing one life for each vampire you control. But it takes other things to be good. As a first pick, a single color red card that's just good in essentially any deck we build um, is probably where we want to go. Uh, then we have a pretty interesting pack here. Uh, Skin Shifter is a pretty meh card. It's the fact that it needs to be another attacking creature and non legendary at that just to be even more like restrictive. How many good targets are you going to have? Uh. I do like Stampede, but I don't really want to snap it here. Um, so we've got a couple of things we can look at here. Like, technically this is a dinosaur, but it's, like I said, it goes in any deck, so it doesn't really matter. So we can take a look at a couple things. Uh, black Red beats with the Blood Letter. Black Green, more mid-rangey with the Dryad. Or Black Blue with the Lookout. Or sorry, Black Blue. Red, red Green, Red Blue, Red Black. I think I like Lookout here. Eh. We're gonna take a look out. Oh, but then we're. Oh, wow. Okay, this is interesting. I think we're gonna take the Aerialist. Yeah, uh, Pyrrhosaur is also good, but Aerialist is a, is a house on its own. So I think we're gonna take that and kind of just get into our colors here. Um. Now we've got like a great finisher for our red blue flying pirates deck. You know, like this this seems like a plan. If we had gone with the blood letter in the last pack, we would probably grab the dire fleet captain here and be like turning sideways pirates, but I think Aerialist is gonna be better. Oh. Now this is a pack, isn't it? I think we're gonna take one with the wind. Uh we could take Plunderers, as that card is also insane, but it does make us like a three-color deck, at least. I'm not, like, I think one with the wind is just fine with what we've got going here, of just like a red, green, red, blue, ugh, red, blue, flying, uh, aggressive deck. Um, just turning things sideways, and I think... So I think that's going to be, like, cause, like I said, Plunder is just good, but it doesn't really go with any of our cards here. This might be pushing it. <laughs> uh, so I think we might go another way. What is that way, though? Cancel is... Alright. I would... Uh, we're gonna have enough pirates that I'd much prefer to be playing uh, dispersals, though. A fire cannon? Might just be better just to, like, take a whip tail. Or a mark. Just take a mark. There's a... There's a... We probably don't want to ever not play this, but there is a non-zero chance we don't play it. Ness Robber? I kind of like Ness Robber. Or do we just want the run aground? 
I think we want running ground. And this robber is replaceable. Like I said, replaceable. As good, if not better. And just another two drop. It's a pirate instead of a dino, which is relevant. Oh, what? Windmill. This card is... I've been liking it more and more because of the fact that it, it's, you know, it enters the battlefield, like, as an enchantment most times, and then it's like a reuse... It, it, it's a three-mana enchantment. It, target creature gets plus two, plus one, and it's reusable. It's not, it's not as slow as most equipment. And with these flyers, like, all the pirate flyers, it just... Oof. Combo... Uh, I like Hunters. It's, it's a worse finisher than Monster Sword, but it's still a nice big ground finisher type creature to get us there. I think we, we might want to take a Stampede here. I don't really want to play Headwater Sentries or Pirates. I don't want to play any of those other cards. But this might, you know, be relevant. Eee. I mean, we'll at least take a Sailor Means here. It does play with our plan. Oh, dual shot. Also just fine. A lot of a lot of phoenixes in this draft. Wait. I just said Phoenix. Is that a Phoenix? what the hell? I've never actually like stopped and looked at the art. Some kind of bird, but there's just a lot going on in the background. I might, I, you know, I might be, I'd be willing to concede that it might not be a phoenix. But anyway, distracting myself from the draft. Uh, so far, we're looking pretty solid. We've got a couple, you know, the aerialist and the sailor means. Uh, sorry, the uh, sirens lookout are both very good cards. With the Cutlass, Monster Sword, Sun Ground Cutters, say, you know, we have the top end. Pretty locked out. Is that a Jace Land? I can't tell if that's him or just something else on the ship. We established last time that. While this was like one of the most expensive cards going into the set, not actually Gaia's Cradle is not actually great. Uh, don't have a lot of Merfolk. This pack is pretty booty for us. I guess we just take a running around and are okay with that. It's like a, not a single damn red card. Ooh, fire cannon. I do like me a st Stormfleet spy, but... This card is... Uh, yeah. I, there's not much running around that that six damage can't kill. So if you can raid, you can kill most things in the set. Ooh, this is a pack. What were these cards a second ago? Um, I think we're going to take Cannonade because we've either got big old dinosaurs or pirates so far on the deck. And this card is just a murderous, savage, disgusting beating when it works. Now, immediately after that, we're going to take a card that is a total Nambo with it, but it's still good enough that it's fine. We could use a couple more two drops, I think, but we'll we'll see where they come. I mean, I don't like the brazen buccaneers, but again, one of the better cards in the pack, and 
is at least somewhat relevant in getting towards our good later cards. We do some Siren Truces. Those would be these to very good in our deck. Hey, Siren Druze. Okay, I guess I'll take that. I did ask for it. Um, next we can take a two drop. Uh, no. Still haven't started with this card, but I swear when we do, we're going to lose the draft, but we're going to have fun doing it. <laughs> uh, I don't think this card is good, but... Take that dual shot out too. Okay, I've gone from casually saying we could use more two drops to now desperately worried we're not going to get enough two drops. Yeah, desperately, desperately worried that all of a sudden we're getting cut out of these colors. I mean, we were getting past good blue cards in that whole first pack. And then we started the second pack just like, oh, some good red cards. And then now we're just down to nothing. Uh, we'll take a cancel. I don't want to play it. But I might. I still haven't figured out, like, where this balance is in the format. Uh, side room shorekeeper, I guess. Sideboard, side room. Ooh, munitions. We actually got to see that and play against us in the last draft, and it was about as good as I imagined it would be. Uh, against us, so. I'm more likely to play it than I was before. But I can't decide if cancel is, like... Three, uh, if the three man counter is just not good enough for this format, like it's just too expensive for the format, or if it it's doesn't matter that it can't deal with the low to the ground cards because it will answer the one card you need them to not play so you can win. Really? Nobody wanted Brontodon? That was in those colors? Well, <laughs> I think the correct pick is probably Ness Robber. Yes, obviously, you always just want to snag Star of Extinction for sweetness level purposes, but I don't think it's necessarily the correct pick at all because it doesn't really seem castable. Like doesn't seem like a thing. I think we just want Ness Robber because we need two drops. We'd otherwise be willing to take a headstrong brute, I think, but... Man. I mean, Pyromancer's fine, but we're just... We're not seeing the kind of cards we want to see. Like, it, you know, it's a pack where somebody snaps the rare, pass shifted along to us, and literally there's one red card in it. The two blue cards we don't really want. So this is, again, it's a card that seems good, but can we reliably get to seven to cast it? Versus, like, you know... 
Unfriendly fire. I think we're just taking the unfriendly fire. Admittedly, obviously, the uh, Marauders is a much better effect on the battlefield than uh, a Star of Extinction. I still think the Unfriendly Fire is just going to be more relevant, more games. <sighs> Can I just take a second Pirate's Cutlass? Yeah, why not? Oh, Fire Cannon. Let's go. I mean, we'll take a depth. I don't know if we want to actually run it, but we definitely don't want to run a second headwater sentries. To be fair, at this point, I don't know if I want to run Sire and Druze in the double cutlass one with the wind deck. I'm going to have a lot of times where I'm just not going to be able to target the pirate that I have available because it's going to... I mean, it'll save it, but... I mean, I guess with the Cutlasses, it's fine, because it just drops the Cutlass off of it. Yes, I can't get the free value of draw me a card cycle style, but... Come on. There's just hammer skulls just hanging around. Seventh pick in these packs. Alright, well, looter is good for us. Two drop pirate is like super key for us in this general moment. Could really use it like a late firebrand here, too. I don't remember if there was one in our first pack. I don't think so, because I never even considered it. And I probably would have taken it over Nesrava, right? What was in this first pack? No more two drops, I don't think. Who might have been another shipwreck looter? I feel like I saw one of them go by. I really don't remember what pack it was in, though. Hmm. Sorry. Ooh, uh... Pff, contract killing... I don't think I really want a dinosaur stampede. I guess Pirate's Prize is a card. There's, you know, worlds where I want a sideboard sentinel, I guess. I still haven't seen them, but depending on those other cards. Nothing in my colors. This is very interesting. Like It's not even like we have, like, a ton of cards over here that are, like, bad cards so I mean I guess there's a de like I don't know I guess there's a lot of sideboard cards over there but I feel like we've got like we just didn't see a lot of cards in our colors they weren't like dinosaur state like yeah, I don't know if we find like we found a lot of like good playables though but like just exactly the limit <laughs> Uh, whew. Okay, let's let's think about this deck. We probably can't realistically play 13 spells. So we do need to look to cut a spell first, right? Is it one with the wind or is it Siren Druze? I think it's Siren Druze. We got Cannonade, we got Depths, we got Pirate's Prize. This is good. We'll just run 16 again. Right, we got Depths, we've got Prize. We got a couple ways to just like, get a treasure and get out our 5-6 drops. There's a lot of them. And then, just strap Cutlass is the thing, right? deck just want another creature enough that we want a fire catcher and keeper? Like if we strap a Pyrus Cutlass or one with the wind onto it, it's a 3-3, three, three, a 3x three menace that's 
you know, either gonna trade up probably with a double block pretty well or will fly and not be blockable. And it does just give more targets for these early spells that need targets. I think that's fine. I think we pull the prize. I like having a draw card spell, but not one of those things you need. Need. Yeah. Got all this double red, but oh, let's first let's sort back from mana cost. That's really bothering me. Okay. I got all this double red, but do I, do I want to run nine seven? It's want to be eight eight. I think this is one of our better decks. I think this is a deck that could very easily get us back to Trophyville, right? Am I just, am I blind at this point? Am I even a good judge at this point? I've, got, I've, I've been trophied in over, over a week and a half. Am I even good anymore? Hopefully. Hopefully I'm fine. Oh. This hand seems very awkward. They've got a one with win and a sure strike, but like a sailor of means to use them on? And then a Pyromancer is a 5 drop with 2. I think we mulligan. Ugh. This hand is just as awkward. But I don't really want to go down to 5. At least here I can, like, if I fall behind, I can run around. I can build the board technically with the cutlass on three, even if I draw nothing else between now and then. On the other hand, it, 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 if I drew no lands, it does absolutely nothing. And what it does do if I draw a land was play a Sailor of Means. Though, you know, I would have definitely kept that hand if I knew I was going to draw hashtag all lands. The top four cards in my library have been lands. beneficial just to play it now because it only costs two to equip so while I could I do get a free equip when I play it it's still cheaper just to use the mana I'm not going to use and equip it later Hey, it's a not land. I think I'm going to use it next turn. Um, not because I don't think it's particularly a great tempo play, but it it I would I it lets me play on crowd hunters, which is some sort of action. It's technically making a play. It's not continuing to sit here and get smacked in the face. I am going to wait, though. I'm now very worried about getting counterspelled. Hey! Oh, that's that's much better then.
I don't already need the treasure for anything in particular, so I'm just gonna strap up the uh, bucks. Run aground. Dream caller. Okay. That's pretty good. What the hell? Does he have another? Does he have a counter spell? He must have a counter spell, right? I mean, I still have to play the hunters. If I just sit around, I'm still just dead. Doesn't counter it? What is happening? What? The second siren? That is incredibly brutal. I guess I guess we're not gonna answer the question if we're good at magic or not today, cause <laughs> holy! <laughs> I... <laughs> what is this dude's deck? What is this guy's deck? I'm over here like, yeah, we got one of our better decks. We got lots of nice, you know, removal. We got ways. Nope. Runner grounds are terrible. Can't, be, like, he's got, it's a flash creature that gets a, a tap when it comes in the battlefield. I can't run aground it. I guess we'll play a cancel. Beyond that, I do kind of think, you know, I don't want two red but one seems all right. I mean, all right. We'll run out there with this, I guess. Lambs to the damn slaughter. Alright, sure. We got Lookout into Cutlass. With any luck, we'll draw a uh, two mana pirate. And... Oh, not a two mana pirate, but still a good two mana play here. I think it's better to use the Water Trap Weaver than to play the Siren Lookout on this turn because I think that I want to be aggressive as possible because I can't, um, I have to assume that he wins a long game with those Lookouts and the, uh, lose a third of your life. So, I want to bash. But I don't want to let him accelerate anything out by getting treasure for free. No land, no land. Come on. Oh, 
that is disgusting. That is disgusting. He just got to five mana and just passed with all his mana. Ugh. Oh, this is brutal. Move to combat, have my Siren Lookout get tapped. Maybe he just doesn't now. Tap the 3-3 three, three and the 2-2. Two, two. That does let him if he wants. I mean, it would be really aggressive and weird, but so that's the correct tap because that's the, that that's the tap that gets you closest to making an attack, and that's this that's what you're tapping for there because you've already passed my attack step. Is he just doing it again? Is he gonna just double dream caller me again? Because I'm not gonna handle that well. I have to admit it. I'm not gonna handle that well. I'm gonna be real mad. Go for skill dugs. It's kind of annoying, but I can pyromancer through it. Oh. Okay. That is. Yeah, that is pretty okay for us. He thought he was getting a lot more out of that than he was. But then he just turned his whole turn into... Yeah. He spent a card to trade for my Siren Lookout and, and set me back a draw step. So it did not work out particularly wonderful for him. When it comes into play, I have to attach it to a pirate. So I'm going to patch the pyromancer. I think I'll bash with it this way. No. Yeah. Bash with it. If you want to double block, that's cool. We'll stay on the Sailor means, because that's our best blocker. Okay. That, that doesn't seem good either. Well, that was a good draw. Oh, that's our only pirate. That is so unfortunate. I want a double strap. Oh, 
I didn't do the math right. I could have double strapped and attacked. Now I'm too far behind. Oh man. Yep. The monster plunderers. Now we can never kill it. That's great. It's wonderful. Well, I mean, if he wants to attack with it, that's okay. I mean, he probably has sirens roofs. Definitely see a sirens roofs in my future, but. Why don't I get to draft in this guy's seat? Come on. I could play his deck. Uh, if he sacrifices the knave, makes two, he can make one more, but he still can't kill me. I guess he's just going to sacrifice that for tokens. I feel like he can get a double block pretty effectively. Killing the knave now because he only has one card in hand, and so if he wants to, he can make the choice right now of drawing cards for treasure or having a ten ten. But he cannot have both. <sighs> At least this guy cast it before combat. I, I can appreciate that. Still have no idea if I'm good. I mean, I feel like I played that last game really well. I feel like the first game, I... There was, there was no winning that game. But... I played the second game well. I pressured him. I was on the verge of making him stop attacking, basically, when he top decked the unfriendly fire.
Come on! Just let a man live. <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh buddy. Am I just gonna get like hit with the opposite now and just some guy is just gonna somehow come underneath my deck to super aggro? I need to top deck an island here. That is, that's very important. Whew. That is that is great. That is huge. Now we can attack freely, and then when he sure strikes, we can depth the fire uh, shrine keeper and just set him behind. Oh. I was sure he was going to sure strike. Why the hell did he leave back the, the fire shrine keeper then? It's got menace. I don't get it. Alright, that's fine. Now he attacks with it. Okay. Whatever you say, buddy. Ooh, Buccaneers. I was going to fire cannon blast and just attack with these guys. But with Buccaneers, I can attack with the Bucks and the Firebrand. That's pretty good, too. Unfortunately, that both of our explorers bricked. I just have this, like, at this point I'm just scarred by this this format so far. Anytime an opponent cat just taps any man, I just cringe, because I'm just like, it could be anything. I've seen, it's all happened. I've seen it all. Oh. Jackpot. I'm gonna wait. Got like eight ways to deal with that blood letter next turn, so. Plus, I can still I can fire cannon blast and then depth of desire if you play something else. I'm just gonna have dodge a contract killing. Or an unfriendly fire. Since that is the theme card of the day, apparently. Of whipping my. Uh, 
Oh, well. I mean, sure. Kathlak. I can try to wait, but because he's playing the Lightning Greek crew, I have to assume that he's got, like, more pirates. I'm just gonna blast that now. Because what? The opponent passed to the end of turn for some reason, which was confusing. But we still have two bounces to get past whatever he does here. Have fun doing that again for the next two turns, buddy. Depths, then we're going to use the uh, token to cast Shipwreck Leader after combat. I mean, I don't know if there's anything. I, I guess I guess we would we would uh, discard uh, Run the Ground for Unfriendly Fire. That seems like big game. Even, but like if, even if there's only one card we want to discard the rudder ground for, we still loot because either we draw that card and we discard the rudder ground, or we draw some other card that's worse than the card we would want the most and we discard that. Oh, is that just game? I think that's just game. Nice, didn't even have to show the nest robber. Alright, well he just seemed to be playing a mediocre red black pirates, but we are like a pretty good blue red pirates. So I think we'll be alright here. I do think we want Siren Drews in the main deck. Why? Eh, eh. Uh, bottom. It's not a land and it's not like an elite spell. We don't really want it. That's, that's an okay draw. Definitely rather be playing that on three and getting an artifact than playing the uh, depths to try to fish for a fourth land, you know, an artifact. Fourth mana source. We do need to dodge him playing a Cutlass here. That is just god-awful for us. Whew. Okay. So we're taking four this turn, and he's got a 4-4 four -four that we can't really do much about. Why didn't he attack with the Blight Keeper? I don't understand this opponent. It don't make any sense.
we draw land, I think we just attack uh, with, for a raid and then pick off the blood letter. If we don't draw land, we might just make a water trap weaver. Get out of our pilot's cut. I'd probably better make the weaver than the cutlass. It's pretty bad for us if he goes for the double, but I don't think we can avoid it. You. We found a land. Mm. What do we do here? Fine. I want to tap down the blood lender because it buys a couple more turns for us to find ourselves a uh, flyer. So we can just find a flyer. We just strap the cutlass to it, and it doesn't really matter which flyer it is or whether or not we trigger the explorer. Well, I guess it does matter if we trigger the explorer if we want to equip the cutlass the same turn. That is somewhat relevant. Well, I mean, he can't actually hit me with it. Wait. Why would you... Why would you put that on the squire? That's a mystery and a half. It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Wrapped in a riddle. I just make sentries. I can get in for two, but if I get in for two, he can get back and gain three. But if I don't attack, I can threaten to block and not let him lifelink. Or let him make this his last lifelink. Yeah, we're going to 80 block that. Like, how bad can he really blow us out? He can get... If he kills one of our other creatures, he can get himself a free water trap weaver. I guess a skullduggery nets him one of our creatures. Uh, 
Okay. We now desperately need to draw the flyer. Hey. I don't think I want another running ground right now. We could do more damage otherwise, but we're strapping this onto the lookout because it protects us from uh, a pre-combat fire cannon blast. That just lets him win. Also leaving back this sailor. Next turn I can attack more reliably with the sailor, because I'll have running ground up as an option, but <laughs> of all the cards. Of all the cards. One I can't play around really. Great. Wonderful. Fantastic. I'm ecstatic about this scenario. He gets hit for one, I go down to two. Ugh. That's what I do. We gotta assume he has action cards in his hand too, because if he has lands, he'd be playing them because he wins if he can get to Blightkeeper uh, mana. That's cool. Hey, he's got a card in hand. Wait, I guess I should equip the cutlass to something. I'm not attacking though, because I just died to a pirate. I should have put this here. That was a mistake. If he attacks with everything like he should probably be. Or at least if he attacks the deacon like he should be, he does pick out a decent card instead of uh I should be trading the, the weaver for it. But I wasn't thinking properly about this equipped and I equipped it onto here, I think it would block the three threes for getting that to five three.
Hey. I mean, that buys us a couple turns. And actually, I guess the Water Trap Weaver is better given that he attacks everything because he's a better attacker because of the extra power. It would have been worse if he had attacked with just the uh, the deacon, but by attacking with everything. Okay, if I could find a removal spell or a flyer. What is, what is, why, that was, if that card was in his hand last turn, why wouldn't he play that? You wanted to look at the next card that bad? You all, you knew you wanted to keep the Blight Keeper, so you wanted to get a different scry? That doesn't seem good. Any creature threatens lethal right now. Eh. Super sorry. I need him to make a mistake, but he's made a couple. So, I mean, there's a non-zero chance he just doesn't attack here. Normally I would concede, but like I said, this guy has missed multiple random keeper attacks. This isn't frozen. He's really thinking about it hard. I'm very curious if he's gonna not attack with this. Very curious. Cause he put the horn crest on top, so he doesn't have the eighth mana. He should have been the horn crest. If he was this worried about this attack. I got really close to the mic for this part because I thought it would be over a little quicker. But here we are. Still debating this attack. I'm in this dude's head. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Okay, seriously, this is this is killing me. <laughs> All right, I mean, I'm kind of hungry. I wanted to eat sometime soon. I was kind of hope not to spend that like eleven minutes staring at uh, this guy, forgetting to attack with his Blake keeper. I won game one, right? I'm not just wasting my own time. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Okay. What What is happening? I. Any spell I could have for this amount of mana. If I have it, I have it. And you can't do anything about it. I don't know if he knows that or not, but there's no... 
how did that going to change and whether or not that thing attacked with with the mana I have up it's not like I have a white mana up to slash of talent it, my opponent has lost connection okay well I'm going to edit out whatever section this is until the opponent gets back uh yeah, so either he'll be back and I'll finish this match or he won't be back and we'll have a win. Either way, see you soon. So our opponent just conceded to some sort of internet issue, I guess? I don't know. Um, so far we haven't answered the question whether or not I'm good at magic. Uh, round one was a complete just destruction in game one. And then match two... We beat a guy who was making play mistakes left and right and then lost to the UI. I mean, I still don't know. I really don't know. And now we can't even find an opponent because Magic is like, I don't know, I don't know. Are you good? Who knows? Can this deck just come in, pop off, and we'll just feel really good as we leave this video? That'd be nice, right? Uh, I'm going to keep this one. Yes, we desperately need to draw a land, but once we draw like one land, we're pretty good. Nope, just that, that right right then would be the first time all draft we've drawn the monster saur, naturally. Right when we go, well, this is kinda tight on land, but if we draw land we're pretty good, we'll draw monster saur. That Yep. 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 It's, it's that sorta of draft, huh? It's that sort of day. I don't have like I mean I have to do with the monster sword coming out eventually. Maybe I should have tried to trade. He just wants raid for his own looter. Oh, he's got a Queen's Bay. Interesting. <sighs> Rough. <laughs> I guess we're gonna block the Queen's Bay, even though we'd rather get rid of the Heart Stopper. We didn't trade for it last turn because it was only doing one damage, and. Yep. Well, let's get one of these six drops out of the hand. Why? Why? <laughs> now, we could argue that this is an example of me not being good at magic because, you know, I'm mulligan yeah. there. But, I don't know.
I did feel like we were in a good spot if we drew a land. Now though, now we're not. The land does very little, if not nothing at all for us. In fact, let's take a look at this. We can remove one thing. We take four. We can bounce something the next turn. I mean, technically, if we kill this and then we top deck a cannonade, we're not out of it. Cannonade will clear out his other stuff. I know this costs us another card, but I still I think it's our only uh, our only chance of winning. It involves bouncing that. Then once again, if we tap that cannonade, then we don't just die. Weaver. Technically, he's just still in it. He does not seem particularly interested in spending that black mana. Like, he took a while before he attacked, then he didn't use it. That's interesting. Now, that's bad for us he's got the cutthroat, because it's the same effect as we, uh, we, we made that same play in a prior draft. If it was no cutthroat and he just like wanted something else, then we might be able to finish digging our way out of this one. All right, no reason to show him any more cards because we're just dead. But if we had an attack there, we could have maybe gotten a got the pyromancer kill and used that to get further. So yeah, we'd be all right if we didn't just freaking keep it too. Sure, it's got turn four monster sore. The sailor means on turn three isn't, you know, as our first other action and only other action. It's not ideal, but.
Come on, let's go. Hey, that's going to be flying any second. I mean, no, oh, actually, maybe not. He is blue black. He might not have that many Merfolk. And in fact, it's my, his Merfolk option here might be a uh, water trap weaver. That'd be why he's having so much trouble with it. Oh, it's, it's just a heartless pillage. Okay. Uh, I guess sentries and one of these lands. Maybe it was sheer strike in one of the lands. T-Rex in the house. Okay. I mean, you got your flying, so I guess. Card is so good when it's the last card you draw, and so bad when you play it and don't do anything with it. Uh, this is iffy. If I play the Cutlass, I definitely can get in with both my attackers. If I play the Bucks, I need to... to uh, hmm. But on a future turn, I can play Cutlass and Sure Strike in the same turn. We're gonna, take, we're, gonna, we're gonna play the Bucks and try not to draw a land. Unfortunately, we're gonna, but hey. How do we do it? That's fine. Except that does at least let us play Cutlass and Sheer Strike next turn. Which is uh, just a better tempo advantage here. Just to be able to poop stuff out and finish this game off. Okie dokie. It's like that. He top decks the swamp so he can walk the plank. <laughs> and now, okay, I see how it is. That seems actively terrible. Wait, what? Why wouldn't you? If you're gonna. What? Why not just strap the Shaper's Apprentice then and have a blocker that holds back my team? All right, I mean, you do you. All right, we're gonna crack in for five here. He does not have great blocks. No box, in fact, apparently. I'm feeling good right here with the share strike in hand. Oh, and the one with the wind.
I mean, the correct, if the, that means the correct answer is just to do that, right? And then I can share strike for the win. I am less interested in sure striking now because I feel like something's about to happen to that Brazen Buccaneers. Why would he take four damage when he could just pick it up? We're just gonna wait. He could have just he could have just picked that up with the four five. Uh, I mean, not, all right. I think it was I still think it was correct to assume he was gonna play a spell there. Six mana, two cards in hand, and doesn't make a block that makes any goddamn sense. That's gonna do it, right? Come on. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think we saw anything that game that makes us change our game plan. Does this deck want to hijack against this deck? Uh, he didn't really have uh, priority creatures game one. He had a couple. He only he did and he just strapped a one with the, to the something in game two to make it an incredible threat. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll keep that. Roughly our hand from the first game, except we start with one more land, hopefully. And we're on the draw. Ugh, hard stopper. Ooh, that should be okay. Get a couple pirates, but. Ooh, land is good there. Land is definitely good there. I kind of feel like I'm about to get discarded. What do I discard? Cutlass, right? Oh, Cutlass. It's in the depths. A. If we had kept depths, yeah, we could have bounced something and, uh, Got the matcha store next turn, but I don't know if that was necessary. A 
Natural. I am kind of interested in just uh, blasting that here. It doesn't die to the cannonade. And I don't want to just let it sit there and get uh, bounced or something. And because he's playing uh, blue black, I can't say he won't have siren truce. And yeah, I wanted. I felt like I should cast something on that turn. Let's go. We big, we mean, we're a 5 5 trample haste. And we have cannonade to clear the way. We should be set. Now, how greedy are we? We're not that greedy. It's very bad to be that greedy in this case. Like, we could have attacked and, like, tried to get him to spend his death touch mana. And then cast that, because it has trample, so it gets all the five damage it gets through anyway. But that's, like, the only way we get in trouble, is if he has some way to stop us. And when we do that. So, probably the correct play. To not do that. That was greed for greed's sake. And that's fine. He still needs to answer the monstro. He's got. Let's see, he don't. I don't think he got it there. He doesn't. He didn't really do anything right away. If he had cast something to deal with it, he would have cast it right away. Ooh, we got a raid creature too, with the raid trigger. Hey, we got the raid trigger. Probably, yeah, probably wrong. If that was your spell, and I'm going to make a note of this too, if you're running grounding, if you, your spell is running ground and your opponent only has one creature, it is correct to do it at the beginning of combat, not after they've declared attackers. Do not let them have free raid triggers. Oh, wait. Wait, no, it doesn't matter. I, want, I was going to play another mana because I thought I could get out of a dispersal range if I if I, but I was still a mana short so there was no reason to I'd rather keep my extra land in hand walk the plank again all right well that still doesn't answer our flyer And we got Brazen Bucks. No land. Nice. Very nice. That is a, a great card. Though I guess technically we should have garbage that because... Uh, there was no, like, we were, it wasn't going to be any use to us here. Uh, but yeah, we did it. Technically. I mean, we got the 2-1. Um, I don't know. Still, we still haven't answered the question if I'm any good at magic, because we went 4-3 and three overall with one. When it should have, we should have probably went 2-1 in both of our wins, because that guy should have beat us in that one game. So we should, it should be a 4-4 forward, forward deck. Yeah. Who knows? We'll try and answer the question again tomorrow, I guess. Uh, until then, uh, everybody has a great life. And, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. But other than that, you know, peace.